right, so, um, solving logs, uh, solving logarithmic equations, solving exponential equations, we're really going to make use of the interconnectedness between logarithms and exponential functions themselves. So let's suppose, I mean, this is very procedural, but that's what these videos are for. Uh, let's suppose we're trying to solve something that looks like this. We're trying to solve this logarithmic equation. I'm going to draw your attention to the instructions that are in the book, by the way. Page 380, I believe. Uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what problem this is. But it says to solve this and around the answer to three decimal places. Now that probably means it's not going to work out perfectly, and so I've got a calculator on hand just in case. But my goal is to get our answer as perfect as possible, uh, and also to use the calculator as little as possible, because I want to make sure that I could do this by hand if it were something that works out perfectly. Uh, and so as I go through this, you're going to notice I'm going to try to do that as much as possible. So anyway, first step. When we're looking at this, I know I have the log of uh, the square root of x minus 8, and it equals 5. <clears throat> Things I just don't like. I'm not really a huge fan of that square root. I mean, I could go ahead and, and work at this point, and I'm going to solve this problem in two different ways. I just want you to understand that. Um, the, first, the first time, though, well, I don't like that square root. Square roots, uh, opposites of squares. Ah, so I could write it as an exponent. So we're going to go back to those properties of exponents. I can write x minus 8 as really being the 1 half power. And so I can rewrite the original problem in this way. Now, what I notice is I've got an exponent on this, this input of a logarithm. And what that really means is I've got an exponent on a on a exponential expression or I've got a power to a power so I can really use my properties of logs and take this one half power and pull it out of the input of the log and put it as a multiplier on the logarithm itself and that's going to be nice uh, because then it's not you know it's not inside the log it's not messing up as much stuff there it's making it a little bit more doable by hand it's making that structure of the problem a little more familiar. You know, one half multiplied by something equals five. And whereas I had something of blah, all that crazy stuff equals five. This looks a little bit more comfortable. Now that means, since it is more comfortable, I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar solving stuff like this. When I'm looking at solving this, I want to get x. Which means I really need to get rid of all the other stuff, like the log and the eight and the one half. And I can get rid of the one half right now. The way that I can get rid of multiplying by one half is to multiply by two. And so I can really do that to both sides. I'm going to multiply both sides by two. And that would leave me with a natural log of x minus eight equals ten. You know, five times two. Five multiplied by two. Oh. I'm subtracting two things that are inside a log. I can't really simplify that. At this point, if I want to get x by itself, I really need to get rid of this log. Now that means that I need to understand what this is the log of. So I'm just going to rewrite that really quick. Natural log is log base e of x minus 8 equals 10. Now there's, there are lots of different ways to think about this. I could really realize that I can cancel out a log if I use an exponential because of the inverse relationship between the two. Or I could just look at this form and it's like, you know, what's the power on e that makes x minus 8? Well, it's telling us the power is 10. And so I could just convert the form right away, just understanding how to read a log and what it means. Uh, you know, I don't really care how you do it. Some of you might choose to, you know, apply an exponential to both sides or raise e to both sides, and so you can kind of rewrite it that way, um, leading us to you know, uh, e to the, well, okay, I don't want to flip things around. So this is going to cancel out the log base e, so I'd be left with x minus 8 equals e to the 10th power. For those of you that don't like what I did in green, if you just really want to think, what's the power on e that makes x minus 8? Well, it's 10, so that means e to the 10th made x minus 8. That's how I think about it a lot, just kind of convert the form. 
So e to the 10th made x minus 8. So e to the 10th made x minus 8. There we go. Um, finishing this problem off, I really want to solve for x. I can do that. I really need to add 8 to both sides. And we're just going to be left with x equals e to the 10th plus 8. Now I could follow the instructions in the book, or I could type this in and get a decimal approximation, but I'm going to choose not to. This looks like a pretty perfect answer. This is really easy to type in in the calculator if I wanted to. Uh, it's a nice, convenient end answer, and so that's how I'm going to leave it. So I, I really like this. Uh, things I want you to keep in mind. I want you to keep in mind we could have actually solve this original problem in a multitude of ways. Um, so for instance, we can solve things analytically or using the equations um, and, and manipulate those by hand. I could have actually typed this equation into my graphing calculator and then I really want to look and see where it was equal to 5 so I could have typed in the line y equals 5 as a second equation in my graphing calculator. It's kind of so I could have typed, you know, if I want to graph it I could have typed y equals natural log of the square root of x minus 8, and I could have typed in y equals 5. And I could have simply looked for the intersection point between those two. That's a possibility. Uh, I could always guess and check. That doesn't sound fun, though, so I don't think I would do that one. It sounds time-consuming, especially considering the size of that answer. e to the 10th, that's huge. Even graphing is going to be kind of annoying there. Um, you know, I also mentioned I could have done this in another way. So let's just look at that really quickly. So instead of uh, changing the form the way that I did, I'm going to do this one not in green. Maybe I'll do it in red. Okay. So I could have taken this original equation, natural log, the square root of x minus 8 equals 5. I could have just rewrote this using the idea below um, right away. So I could have re really rewrote this as the square root of x minus 8 equals e to the fifth. You know, just converting from a logarithm to an exponential. Uh, if I wanted to get rid of that square root, I could have really squared both sides. Squaring this is really going to raise it to the second power. So raising this to the second power. Power to power, I'm multiplying the powers. I could have then wrote this as x minus 8 equals e to the 10th power. Um, you know, because we really did this. And, and then we would get here, and again, now I could have added 8 to both sides and got the exact same answer we did before. Same story. Always multiple ways to look at things. Uh, some are more convenient than others. You know, the, the nice thing about this one is it, it made it so I've worked with a little bit more comfortable things in terms of squares, get rid of square roots. Um, and I didn't have to have that square root thought right up front. You know, the fact that it's a one half power. I like this just because I got to work with more numbers as I went along. But, you know, looking back now, this one actually probably was a little bit more mentally efficient. I don't think either one is really more work, just some are more mentally efficient than others. So, Anyway, hope this problem helps. See you later.